the cool splash of whiskey at the center of the carousel. After a wild ride with too many wrong turns, this is another terrifying edition of Gonzoville Tonight. And I'm your unbiased, unabated, undeniably unhinged host of what might be the most unprofessional news program in professional journalism. That's right, Dr. Jafurius Higgison. Hey, how you doing? This episode is sponsored by the Monkey Ranch in Louisville, Louisville's finest eclectic hillbilly headquarters, featuring over 60 bourbons and serving pub fare from our own Monkey's Uncle, located at 1025 Barrett Avenue, Louisville, Kentucky. And of course, no episode would be complete without a shout out to all of the doomed. Yes, the doomed. We believe in the preservation of the doomed everywhere, and we'd like to dedicate this episode to you, the doomed wherever you may be. And it was a big night for a significant portion of the Doom generation in Louisville, August 1st, which turned out to be the first inaugural Greatville Dead tribute to Jerry Garcia and the band The Grateful Dead. That was held over at the Brown Foreman Amphitheater and Waterfront Park on Saturday. The Grateful Dead began as the Warlocks before changing names in 1965, premiering at Ken Casey's infamous acid test an affiliation that would largely shape both groups. The Dead, as they would be known, was comprised originally of uh, Jerry Garcia, of course, playing guitar and doing some singing, Bob Weir, also on the guitars, handling some vocals, Ron Pigpen McKiernan on keyboards, harmonica, vocals. Uh, Pigpen did a lot of things. Not a lot of people, you know, give him a lot of credit, but, you know, those real good Grateful Dead fans do, right? Uh, of course, Phil Lesh on bass and also vocals. Bill Kreutzmann, playing the drums. The Grateful Dead event grew out of a simple idea only two months ago during a conversation between friends and co-producers Colonel Denny Humphrey and Ashley Angel, who then organized the birthday tribute, which drew almost a thousand deadheads, almost double the expected numbers, and over 400 more than was needed to pay for the event and its operating costs. This all according to uh, Colonel Humphreys, who owns the Monkey Wrench, which uh, sponsored the event. The Shindig included performances by Hot Iron Skillet, the Louisville Merry Pranksters, Screamin' Jay Hawkins, Tyrone Cotton, Fiasco, the Rumpke Mountain Boys, and more. The event included vendors of all kinds, food by Little Cheesers, drinks by the Monkey Wrench, and more good old hippie love than you could shake a double-thumbed fist at. And, hey, oh, oh, whoa, hey, if you thought that was all that happened, you are wrong! Fans of Mortal Kombat converged on Sidon Phaeton's Monday to virtually dismember and defigure each other in the ultimate bloody battle royale for fatality supremacy. During Mortal Kombat Monday, down at every hipster's favorite little drinking hole in the corner of Breckenridge and Vine. People came, people saw, people conquered. They drank bourbon and beer and ate from the street vending teenager outside. They smoked cigarettes and lingered on the sidewalk in front of the Gonzo Today office and talked about Nico. It was a terribly cerebral scene. We also dropped by the Tim Faulkner Gallery on Monday for Art Talks, an open public art discussion group hosted by Joshua Hutick. Art Talks begins with a speaker for 10 to 30 minutes talking about their work, why they made specific artistic choices, their background, etc. That's just to get the conversation going. And then the floor is opened up for critique and discussion. This week's speaker was Claire Pupo, an artist based in Louisville, Kentucky. She received her BFA in painting, Summa Cum Laude, from Merrillhurst University in Oregon in 2013. Pupo has participated in numerous group shows while a student and has had her work in Merrillhurst University. The other events on the calendar that you don't want to miss, the Flea Off Market, August 2015 at 1007 East Jefferson Street, Louisville, Kentucky, featuring over 100 vendors offering a multitude of handmade items including musical instruments, jewelry, clothing, accessories, soaps, terrariums, and a variety of local fine arts and crafts. Also featured will be farm fresh goods, vintage clothing, records, books, antiques, curiosity, tons of cool used stuff, not to mention great music and live entertainment. Shh, hey, don't mention that. What? I already did. Be sure to mark your calendars August 7th from 4 until 10, August 8th from 11 until 6, and then on August 9th from 11 until 5. Uh, next week, we'll also see the first Create Art event at Sink or Swim Gallery down on Baxter Avenue. Every Tuesday at Sink or Swim Art Gallery at 8 p.m., bring your art supplies and create. 
come hang out with other artists, create, talk, and gather inspiration. That's uh, located at 962A Baxter Avenue, Louisville, Kentucky. And that wraps up this short edition of Gonzoville tonight. Expect a whole lot of coverage this week, and we apologize for the delays in programming. Hey, we got places to be, you know, but it's worth the wait, right? Until next time, folks, it's best to draw your curtains and find a nice, safe, dark place to hide. And just stay weird. They're less likely to see you if you don't move. I'm your host, Dr. Furious Higginson, broadcasting live from the heart of the American dream, right smack dab in the center of the vortex, and spinning wildly so you don't have to. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another outstanding episode of Gonzoville Tonight, sponsored by the Monkey Wrench, a place where you may even see dancing monkeys, hear real bluegrass, and of course get drunk until you can no longer remember where you are. Yep, stop on down to 1025 Barrett Avenue and get drunk. Get drunk. Folks, it's a great place to get drunk. And eat food, girls, and liquor and food. Stop on down. <laughs>